Today in the joy of editing, it's the colorized filter found in Nick 8 Color Effects. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Today it is the colorized filter found in Nick 8 Color Effects, part of the Nick Collection 8. I'm having a lot of fun going through these different filters in Nick Color Effects and let me know if you are too. Please leave me a comment in the comment section below. And don't forget to please like, share, and subscribe. This helps to promote my channel, The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. And when you do that, I really appreciate it. By the way, if you don't yet own the Nick Collection 8, where you'll find Nick 8 color effects, or if you would like to purchase any of DxO software, click on my affiliate links in the description below this video. If you're purchasing any of the DxO software for the first time, you can use my promo code Dave Kelly. Now that's all one word, Dave Kelly at checkout and save 15% off your purchase. This does not apply to upgrades. If you just want to try out a piece of DxO software, they also offer free trials. Well, let's go ahead and dive in. I'm starting out in Photoshop, but you could use ColorFX as a standalone app. You can run it from DxO Photo Lab. There's many ways of using it, but I'm starting out here in Photoshop. I'm going to click this C button for ColorFX. This opens up the Nick 8 ColorFX panel, and I'll just click open, and we'll launch ColorFX and get started. And here we are in ColorFX. I'm looking for Colorize. Now these are all in alphabetical order. You could come up to the search bar and type in Colorize and you'll find the filter really fast or come to the list. Again, they're in alphabetical order. I'm just gonna click the plus for Colorize and here's the Colorize filter and here's the default setting and we have sort of this light blue color added. Already it looks pretty cool. Now also if you'll come here to the filters, Colorize and click the drop down. You get a bunch of different presets in here. And this is a good way of starting out possibly. You might find a preset that you kind of like. Let's click on cool blue. We are actually on cool blue. It's the default setting. Let me click on subtle red. Here is subtle green. And then we have ruby red and cyanotype. So this gives us a good idea of what this filter can do for us. Let's start out with uh, ruby red and maybe make some alterations here. And as we do, we'll learn how to make these adjustments and see what they do for us. Let's start out with the methods. Now the methods have a drop down. Right now we're on method six. If we click here, we can see we have these different methods starting at one going down to six. And if you hover over a method, you can see how that method interacts with your image. Now DxO doesn't really give us a breakdown of how these methods work. So I would recommend to you just hover over the different methods and you'll see the effect it's making on your image. And again, just keep hovering over those methods. And when you find one you like, just click on it. It's really just that easy. Now, basically what the colorized filter does to the image, it infuses it with a uniform color tint, shifting the emotional or stylistic tone of the entire frame. It's like digitally bathing your photo in a selected hue, subtly or dramatically transforming the overall atmosphere of the image. So when we add the colorized filter to an image, we're taking a more artistic approach. The name colorize harkens back to old photo techniques used to hand color black and white images, essentially breathing life into a grayscale image. Nick's colorized filter isn't restricted to black and white work. It carries forward the same spirit, however, taking a scene and adding mood through color. And so I think you'll find it a really good filter to work with, especially when you really want to add some creative effect to an image. Now let's learn about the various adjustments we can make with this colorized filter. Now you already know about the method, how we can alter the mood of the image with the different methods. I'm using method six for this image right now. Under method, we have color. We have two different ways of altering the color. We can apply one color to this image and it will blend in with the other colors of the image depending on this string slider here. But we have a picker tool. If you click on the picker tool, you can click any color and apply that color by clicking on it. For instance, I'll click in the sky and you can see how the image turns more blue. And there's that color swatch. It has changed right there. I'm going to do a command or control Z to get it back to where it was. Or you could click this button here, the color swatch, and a color picker will come up. I'm on a Mac machine. If you're on a Windows machine, it may look a little different. I have various ways of uh, changing colors here, but I like to use the color wheel. And as you can see, I'm using a warm color. 
So I could click anywhere in this color wheel and change that to a different color if I want to. Nothing happens when I click on these colors. I wish it did, but it doesn't. But here I am on that warm color right there. And then you have a brightness slider. If you drag this slider to the right, you can make that color darker. If you drag it to the left, you can make that color lighter. But then to accept the color, you need to click OK. All right. And now I've changed it to this color here. So this color is influencing the entire image. But let's say I don't like that. I'll click this again. And maybe I want to warm it up. So I'll click maybe right around in here. That'll warm it up. And let's darken that a little bit to maybe right here and click OK. And see how that has changed it. Now the string slider deals with the color. If I take it the whole way to the left, in other words, shut it off, I'm taking this color out of the image. Now, when I start to drag it to the right, I'm increasing the saturation of that color, but also it will be applied to the different tonal ranges differently depending on what method I have chosen. Now, let's say I like this amount of 61%, but if we look at our histogram, by the way, if your histogram isn't open, you see where it says histogram, just click the drop down. You'll notice I have a spike on the highlights here. So I can take the highlight slider and start to drag it to the right and pull that spike down. As soon as that spike goes the whole way down, I know I'm no longer clipping my highlights. But I've already set my highlights to 100%. I can't go any further, so I can't reduce that clip anymore with the highlight protection slider. So I have two choices. I could pull my strength back a little bit, like this, and watch that spike go away to right there. Or let me put it back to 61%. Or... The other thing I could do is click on this swatch and maybe darken this up just a little bit, drag this to the right, click OK, and now I've removed the spike also. So there's a couple different ways of going about it. And not only do you have highlight protection, but you also have shadow protection. So if your shadows are getting too dark, you can take the shadow slider and start to drag it to the right and open up those shadows. So you have control there. And this can also alter the mood of your image when you open up the shadows a little bit. It really depends on what kind of a look you're going for. In my case, I like the shadows darker. But let's see a before and after. Let me click this button right here. We can do a split screen. So we started out here, and now we end up here. But you see how we can alter the look of that image. And if you want to, you can take the layer opacity and drag it to the left and bring back some of the original image if you want to. I don't usually like to do that here in color effects. I like to save that to when I send it back to Photoshop. I can always pull back and layer opacity a bit if I want to. Once I get a look I like, I come to the bottom right hand side of the interface and click send as layer. That sends this image back to Photoshop looking just the way it does. And then I can keep experimenting. For instance, I could click on this color swatch and maybe let's add some magenta to this image. Let me click right here and click OK. And that kind of looks cool, right? Now the strength may be too high, so let's pull that strength back to maybe somewhere right around in here. And that's another look we have in the image. Let me click and send that back as a layer. And let's add one more different look. So let's click on this swatch and let's give it kind of a teal look. I think maybe right around here. Let me click and click OK. See what we get. Yeah, more of a teal look to the image. And I like that. But let's play with some different methods. Click right here. Let's try method one. There's method one. Not bad. Here's method two. Here's method three. Method four. Five. And back to six. You know what? I think I like method three, or is it method two? I'm going to go with method three. Let's click that. Now let's add some more strength here. Maybe right about there looks pretty good. Let me click on this color swatch button, and let's darken that up a little bit. So I'm going to drag this slider into the right. Let's try it right here. Click OK. I think I like that, but I think I want to add some more strength now. Maybe right there. Now let's drag this split screen over. We started out here and now we end up here. And I think I like that. I think I'm going to stop at this point. And now if I click right here in the bottom right hand corner, you can see I'm sending this back as a new layer. I could send it back as a smart object, but I just want to stop for now. I'm just going to send it back as a new layer. I'll just click apply and we'll send this right back into Photoshop. And here we are back in Photoshop. So here's my last adjustment right here. I'll shut off this layer. We started out here and now we end up here. Now, if this was too strong, I could take the layer opacity. I like to take it the whole way off and then just build it up slowly and stop where I think it looks good. 
And for this image, I think maybe like right about here. I'll shut this off. Here's before, here's after. And that's a pretty cool colorization. Not bad. Let me shut this layer off. Let me turn on this layer. This was another colorization we made. And I really like this one. Here's the before and here's the after. Might be a little strong, so I'll take the layer opacity and maybe just ease it back a little bit to maybe right about there again before and after. I like that. I'll shut this one off. Let's go to this layer. And I believe this was the second colorization. Now let me turn on this layer. And now let me shut it off. This is before and this is after. I think it's too strong, so let me take the layer opacity and pull it back to maybe somewhere right about here. Now I'll shut it off. Here's before and here's after. You know what? I might make the effect a little stronger to maybe right there. You know, I think this one's my favorite. I'll shut this off again. Here's before, here's after. Now let's look at all three. Here's one of them, this one. Here's another, this one, and this one. For me, it's a cross between this one and this one. And I think I like this one the best. The colorize filter in Nick Color Effects lets you shift the emotional tone of your image by tinting it with color with six methods and flexible controls. It's all about experimenting until the mood feels right. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial on the colorize filter found in Nick 8 Color Effects. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click the bell notification icon, click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.